All right, here we go. Hi guys. All right, so big change from last week. This camera uh, over here is no longer on autofocus. It just focuses right here. So hopefully we will not have obnoxious focus problems and you guys can see all the delightful details. Hey. Small friend, let's get you out. Okay. So I have my second quail uh, for this project. Being quite small and cute, just like the other one. Whew, this one's a little stinky. This one smells like bird. Oh good, thank you, I'm glad to hear. My goal was clear picture. And through some trial and error, I believe we have gotten a clear picture. So. Well, this guy's not particularly dirty, so I think he just smells like bird. That's all right, that's fair, it's a bird. More weird toes. Like, that's a nice normal foot, and this one is just straight missing the whole end of that toe. So, like, why is this one not of a claw? Mm. Birds are weird. Alrighty, we got him. Alright, time to assemble the scalpel. So last week when I was doing this, uh, one of my viewers took a clip of this process, which is pretty something uh, Twitch offers, where the viewers can be like, ooh, that was a cool bit, and you can save a snippet of the recording. And then I got to see it afterward, and she had saved the process of putting the scalpel blade on. I thought that was a nice touch. So I will be doing that again. Just gotta line up those two angles and then push it till it clicks. There we go. Beautiful. So, I started a uh, sharp spin last week, of course. I will show it to you because it's very nice. There it is. <laughs> you can see it says sharps. Sharps. And in the bottom is my one scalpel so far. Uh, in the state of Illinois, you can dispose of sharps by putting them in a thick plastic container and then when you're ready to throw it away, you wrap the entire thing in duct tape so you can't see into it, and you write all over it, sharps do not recycle, and then throw that away. And uh, that is a way to dispose of your sharps in the state of Illinois. Okay, little bird. Wow, his eyes are closed really tightly. That's interesting. Like, when you die, your muscles relax, so usually it's like a kind of a dumb face, but this little friend has a very clear, like, I don't know, expression. Alrighty. So, hey, Clara. Good to see you, sort of. Well, you know, see. Um, nothing else too weird with this guy. Just a good little bird. Alright, little bird. So I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, a bunch of you guys were on last week and know what this is, so I don't, uh, I'm not going to do as much explanation, but I'm still going to be sort of narrating as I go. But obviously, please ask me questions. No problemo. So just like last week, going to wet down those feathers and then just move them out of the way so I can see his naked little chest. You can just see bird skin right away. This guy actually has feathers growing kind of everywhere. Little perching birds, so passerines, don't tend to grow feathers um, on their chests. They're just trying to optimize for weight. Uh, but apparently button quail aren't worried about that because flying is not something they do with any grace or regularity. So there are, in fact, little feathers all over 
uh, the whole bird. Ducks are that way too. Ducks have feathers everywhere. Because um, in the case of a duck, they do have to fly, but they also have to float. Okay, this guy's molting too. I've got like a really distinct pin feather. Like you can see it just sticking right up here. So that's a that's a brand new feather. So. All right, so starting up at the neck, moving on down. Let's get an easy little incision. Yeah, there's a lot more feathers in the way than I'm used to. That's okay. Totes manageable. All right. Well, so far this guy's looking a lot like the other quail. So, kind of young, really pale. Um, this one doesn't feel as keely. Feels like there's a little more meat on this little guy. Uh, so it would have been a healthier bird, but obviously not healthy enough. I still don't know what killed these guys. Um, bat luck. Sometimes something just gets you. All right. Uh, oh, in the freezer. So anytime I'm not working on these until they're fully preserved, they just go right back in the freezer. So the one from last week uh, is together. So in the Ziploc bag, there's the little skin and the little body. And one eyeball. I saved an eyeball because I figured people would like to see those. Um, and so that's bundled up in my freezer. So it'll patiently wait for me without going funky. Uh, while I get the rest of these steps done. This guy's kind of cool. You guys, you can sort of see, uh, so you, you've got the V shape. I can flip him right side up so you can see a little better. Um, all right. So keel, so that's his breastbone. And then this V shape thing is just like you have the, the V shape, like solar plexus thing in your throat. Um, and then if I turn him a little bit, so let me get my poking stick. I shouldn't be using scalpel for this. It's just asking to poke through something. Um, there's the trachea. So it's that clear uh, tube full of little rings that uh, you breathe out of. So that kind of, it goes directly down through the center of here, but it sort of wraps around the side and is on the side of his throat-ish on the way up. And then uh, this big white blueby thing is uh, gizzard. So that's the first stage of digestion. If you are a small bird who has no teeth and thus doesn't chew on your uh, seed-based food. And then neck, uh, which I'll be getting to. There's his little head. So. And then onward. So. Yeah. They're, these are just, these are fantastic little specimens. They just come apart so easily. Which is always weird, like, having an animal just, like, fall apart in your hands, you're like, yay, this is great, how do they live? Why is your skin not falling off? But, you know, they're obviously very different things when you're alive. Because death is bad for you. You tend to go all to pieces. I just realized I put my paper towel under my microphone, and that was a bad plan. So this guy came with some paper towels on him, but I wouldn't want to reuse um, paper towels even stored in. They smell a bit funky. Been around. They've seen some stuff. So. Rewet his feathers, keep him out of my way. Okay, so just like with the last one, I am the first thing I'm doing is trying to skin around his neck so that I can cut the internal structures of the neck loose and get the whole hoodie off of my little bird. So this little probe, I started using it last week to kind of point stuff out. I love this thing because it's got this nice blunt end so I can just kind of moosh stuff around with it. 
Um, and it gets into places that my fingers can't. I have to be careful because since it's metal, it could just like, and I can't feel through it. I can just you know, push through something and I don't want to do that. Um, but overall, it's a, it's a nice, satisfying shape for a probe. Because a lot of probes that I've worked with are pointy, which is also really great, but for different stuff. I actually have, what, one of those? Yeah. Two of them. There's probes in there that are so pointy they've got little sheaths. Uh, the largest animal... Okay, so th that's always tricky because size can be uh, height or weight. Um, so the tallest animal that I've ever taxidermied is a uh, great blue heron. A juvenile great blue heron. And the heaviest animal... Um, and actually, it might beat it out by length, too, now that I think about it, is a beaver. So, beavers might, might win for both, but heron, I think if you laid them next to each other, the, and especially if the wings are out, the heron's just lanky and long. But the beavers were chunks. The beaver, the biggest beaver was uh, 56 pounds, so it was a big dango thing. Um, smallest is a hummingbird. So, like... I don't think it gets much smaller than that. That was that was a little dude. It was very annoying. I mean, it was kind of cool, but it was hard. And it was really, really freezer burned. Because if you think about it, I mean, like, there's like, what? A, a drop of moisture inside of a hummingbird. And so it was gone. And it really freeze dried. But it came out okay. Okay, so I'm putting wood flour on here again. He was starting to stick. So... Get that taken care of. All right. Yeah, this one definitely has a lot of molt. I've got a bunch of broken feathers already um, down my workspace here, which is too bad, but that's okay. There's just nothing you can do about molt. It just breaks. Yeah. He's got to be careful and actually just fast. Like, touch a thing as few times as you can. And that's how you reduce damage to mold. Alright. So I'm trying to get behind his little neck here. And I'm almost there. Ooh, I love this probe. Man. Yay, good tools. So getting behind the bird's neck is always a little bit of extra digging uh, because they have these really strongly shaped S-shaped uh, necks. And uh, so it's like a big pocket in the back of their head. Oh man, which is easier, mammals or birds? Hands down, mammals. Uh, so easy. Mammals are absolutely easy mode um, with maybe one caveat. So uh, mammals skin the ones that i've worked on i guess there's maybe there's you know exceptions to this but broadly speaking um mammal skin is just heavier that's why we tend to make boots out of uh, mammals and not birds tend to obviously ostrich is a thing but um you know you don't make boots out of warblers because there's like nothing there but you may you can make boots out of a squirrel it'd be weird but you could um you make gloves out of a squirrel, I guess. So gloves maybe is a better example. So their skin is just tougher. So like you can skin a rabbit with a bicycle pump. You just put the valve in there and just keep pumping and the, the skin will just inflate and stretch around the uh, carcass. I have not done this, by the way. But uh, it's on YouTube. Um, birds just tear so easily. And they have beaks, and they have weird feet. Mammals, you can skin every single part of them down to the, the toenails. You know, you skin their whole face, and the whole face just comes off. So that's how you get bearskin rugs. Um, so yeah, birds are way tougher, and I just love doing birds. But they're, they're not easy. Okay, man, I could do a bottom cut on this guy. Hmm. All right. I, you know, I had mused about this last last week. I'm going to do this. I'm actually not going to cut through this neck. I've got it all set and I, I would be ready to go, but I'm going to try skinning through the bottom first and then um, I'll keep the body attached to the head and we'll see how that goes. 
Um, I'm not as good at this, so we'll see how that, <laughs> that works out. Um, so the one thing I've already done wrong, if I'm going to be doing it this way, is I've cut really high up the neck. That just means that my overall seam is going to be bigger, um, which is annoying, but it's doable. So that means I'm all the way down here at the legs right now. Trying to dig these guys out right now. That's kind of fun. So I'm already at this uh, nice big knee right here. And I found that just by grabbing his little foot and pushing up. So get that. So I am still going to cut that loose. Because um, the same general principle applies of not wanting to work on the whole thing. It's nicer to divide it into steps. But... Uh, and then Chardon Mom, to go back to your question about mammals versus birds, um, the f I did I learned how to do birds first, and so it was very hard for me to transition to mammals. And the idea of doing noses freaked me out. Like, how do you how do you efface? Um, and so I just had to do it once, and then I was I was like, oh, okay, you know. But it was it was very weird. Noses are strange. If you've always worked on beaks. Because you actually cut the cartilage loose, and it's it's weird. Um, so I will pr almost certainly be working on mammals in the future because they're easier to find legally. Uh, birds have a lot of protections, but let's go back up right here. Mammals. Uh... Oh, what about turtles? Um, I have never per se taxidermied a turtle. Um, I have preserved turtle skeletons by taking them out of the gooey, gooey, you know, nasty old body. Um, you can. You definitely can. There's a famous guy who I just started following on um, uh, Instagram, and I'm blanking on his name. Rubbish. If you look up who, the person who um, taxidermied Lonesome George... Uh, he's that guy. But Lonesome George was the last Galapagos tortoise of his subspecies. Um, hence the name, Lonesome George. And when he died, uh, they, it was a worldwide search to find the right person to preserve him. And they chose this particular dude, and he's quite neat. So I have not done a turtle... I haven't done any reptiles. I really... Well, I've, I haven't done any non-avian reptiles. And so I need to um, research more about that. Because I'm hoping to do a snake. I just have to learn how. <laughs> so, you know. I just never really had the opportunity at the museum to learn about that. Oop. Let's get a little flower. Wood flower in here. But the turtles came out really cool. Because you get um, the full skeleton is of course attached to the shell so you have to like dig around all the attachment points to the shell because a turtle shell is actually its ribs um, and its fused spine so you're not removing its ribs its ribs are the shell and so everything is attached then to the shell um, and it's uh, difficult but cool okay so I'm trying to do the bottom cut so with my little friend here it's a very rude position. I'm trying to cut the vent loose. So I'm going to show you its butt for anybody who wants to see a bird butt. Uh, so that's a bird butt. They only have one opening. It's called a vent or a cloaca. And so I have to go inside the skin and cut that one tube loose. So I'm almost there. But that's my current goal. And of course that means I'm going to have the intestines open right away, which I'm... I, that's one of the reasons I don't love doing this particular method, but... Because, Clara, you usually start from the bottom, right? If you're still on. It's so different coming down here and having, like, no room for my fingers yet. So yeah, this is weird. Uh, 
the only times I've done this particular method, I've usually done it on bigger things, which is the other reason why I'm like, oh no, it's weird looking. I guess pointing out that it's weird looking is a little redundant doing taxidermy, but I have my tools down off camera, but if anybody wants to see any of them, you know. Okay, well, I think I just have to start cutting from the front. What am I looking at here? Yeah, I'm like right, right there. It's rough because I'm peeling away here. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see. Maybe I need to move this forward. Yeah, actually, I think that was a good plan. Um, I'm digging around in here and like, if you're worried that with the camera view, you feel like it's all the same color and you can't tell what's what. Yeah, no, that's that's basically what it is. Um, this is definitely abdominal wall. These black specks are definitely, um, the bottoms of feathers on the skin. So there's this line here-ish that I'm trying to, you know, figure out how far I can skin this before I actually have to cut the cloaca loose. Because there's a point where you just can't just keep tugging. <laughs> You're gonna rip the adorable tiny bird and I don't really want to do that. My goal is to do right by the little tiny bird. So, not rip his butt. I think I'm basically there. Yeah, the, the bottom cut method is something I really need to practice more. I want to be actively doing that when I'm uh, doing these live streams because it's really, really good if you're going to be mounting the specimen because it means you have the head still attached to the body and you can get proportions better and it, it's... It's a great, great method for that. Uh, bottom cut is absolutely superior, in my opinion, if you are training people um, or if you're doing study skins. Because study skins, I sort of kind of don't care as much about their exact proportions. And so I'd rather have a, a method that goes faster, you know. Okay. So, all right, so this is his thigh. So that's his knee that I cut off. And then big old meaty thigh meeting back here to his hip. And uh, again, I'm using male pronouns for no particular reason. It's their thigh. Um, I think I just have to start cutting. All right, so let's just cut and see what happens. <laughs> well, that's intestine, so good, I guess. Wow, that's really watery poop. I already hate this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like opening up a digestive tract early in the process. That's my number one quibble with this particular method. All right, well, that's watery poop. That's way gross. Let me get a little bit of paper towel here. Get that away. Because ew. Ew, ew, ew. Butts are gross. All right. Okay, well, I definitely am in the right area. I've got a little farther to go, though. Oh, too bad, so sad for me, I guess. Let's see. Okay, so the only thing holding on now looks like the spine and I think I'm in the right spot for that. 
Man, this is so unfamiliar. So I'm just going to cut through this and hope for the best. Hopefully all the tail feathers don't fall off or something really exciting like that. Okay, so I see the preen glands. I can skin down and get those guys. Okay, so for those who were on last week, you may remember the preen glands uh, as being the kind of oil glands that help birds preen and maintain their feathers. So you can see these two obvious little dudes right here. Those are just chock full of oil and help the bird remain pretty. And they're now stuck to my skin because of their location, which is correct. That's um, what they would do no matter what method I used. And so I have to clean those out. So I'm going to do that real quick. This is so different having them on here. Let's see. Can I just lift the whole gland up? Maybe? So fun fact of the preen glands, uh, it's a gland. It has an opening to the outside of the bird because of course they have to squeeze it out of something. And on owls, it's really, really big and looks um, kind of like genitals or something. And so people will be digging around like on the back of the owl and there's just this thingy sticking up and they're like, oh, what's the, what is this owl doing? And I'm like, that's the preen gland. And inevitably no one believes me, but that's okay. I'm just going to try nipping the ends off of these and then I can squeeze their gross contents out, I guess. This is so different than my usual method. So different. Oh, but unlike the bird from last week, this one actually has preen gland material that acts more like a lotion and less like whatever that crumbly grode was last week. Yeah, that's just bird lotion. Okay, well... In that sense, this guy seems healthier, but is still equally dead, so who actually knows? Okay. Alright, so I think that's as clean as that's gonna get. Alright, did I cut through the wrong part, and is his tail gonna fall off? Turn that right side out. Okay, nothing's falling off. Hey, <laughs> okay. So bottom cut. We've got his legs off. We've got his butt out. If I can just start skinning up towards his head, it actually went pretty well. So all things considered, despite my belly aching, I feel pretty good about that. I still now have the back end of the bird, which is oozy and growed. Um, so I'm gonna just make a tiny little band aid, boop. So that I don't squeeze them too hard or something and have have a bad time. All right, this is really different moving in this direction. It's working. It's just kind of all upside down, as you know, as far as I can tell. Okay, so I'm doing shoulder blades. You can see the shoulder blade moving up and there's a spine. I'll still do the usual thing where I cut the wings loose. I mean, I guess I can try to be really cool and have more of the body come out, but I don't know if I feel like being cool. Now. Yeah. Okay, so I'm up now to the back of his neck which is more or less where I had skinned before. So I already have most of the body out, so check this out. I'm gonna move my little diaper. Um, so you can see knee, thigh, belly, and then sternum, and up towards his neck. So I just have to figure out how to do the wings using this slightly backward technique. But it's going really fast, so can't complain there. Yeah, I think I'm still going to do the, the wings separate. So I'm going to slice the body loose here so I can uh, come back and do the wings as separate pieces along with the legs. So that wing is loose. Alright, that 
it was loose. So now his entire body is out, um, but his head is still in place. So you can see that's still actually attached this time. So that's different than what I did last time. So I, I'm going to skin around his head, but it'll remain attached. And like I said, that's really good uh, if you're making models based off the body, because then you have the length of the, the neck correct. You don't have to guess from two different pieces. And everything, as you can tell, is very bendy and elastic. So, of course, when you cut it, it kind of pulls back. It, everything springs back. Whereas when it's all in one thing, you can kind of see how they all interrelate and it doesn't um, retract as much. So, pros and cons. So now I have, basically the, the con here is I have to get that really complicated little head skinned while having it attached to a giant dead weight, which is uh, not great, but it's fine. It's fine. We're fine. Let's see. So there's this face. Okay. And I need to re-wet this just a little. Don't need that ripping on me. All right. Feather back. That helps get all those feathers out of the way. All right. So this one. Uh, the other bird I was speculated had some damage on one side. This guy kind of might. There's a little bit of bruising along his ribs, too. I don't feel broken. I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I wonder if they just startled so hard they, like, smacked into each other and died. It's very mysterious. Okay, so I'm looking for this guy's ears as I slowly expose his skull. It's weird to do his face before doing his legs and his wings, but that's what we're doing today. Just mixing it up a little bit. There's apparently a method where you do incisions from the side. Uh, the idea is that you want to preserve the you know, the belly look, and it's often smaller feathers or smaller, uh, or like shorter hair, if it's a mammal, and I've, I've never seen that. So like, I've heard of it, but wow, there's a great molted feather. Can you see that, like, there's the focal, this big stick, and so you can see the, the lovely little feather that was growing out of it, so it's like halfway molted out, but it's got this little stick on the end. I can just break that off, and then I'll get a whole feather out of this. So you just rub off that um, sheath and the feather unfurls, basically. So that's a little bit on the end, but yeah. So yeah, there's a bunch of brand new feather uh, under there. So yeah. Molting is cool. Okay, so let's see if we can get us some ears. Okay. So I think I got it. So the last guy ripped his ears. Let's see if this one I can actually get out in better shape. Because you don't need to, but it's really satisfying if you get the whole thing to pop inside out. One of my volunteers once found a tick inside a bird's ear. She was trying to do this part, and she's like, it's stuck. It's just not coming out. And then we realized why, and everybody screamed a lot. There was a lot of freaking out. Because that was a lose-lose for the, the tick and the, uh, the bird.
There's his ear. So I ripped it a little bit, but I mostly got that whole structure out. Get that loose. So yeah, there's his little ear. And you can see now into his head. So birds have pretty big ears, actually. In the water. And get the other one out. So I find it really restrictive to have the body on here. This is weird. I can't just flop the whole thing around when doing this step, which I can adapt, but it is different. Let's see. Man. I mean, part of it is this guy just has little ears overall. So they're actually a fairly significant hole in his head, but when you're this small, that still small. Almost. Ah, oh, this one's ripping. It's really cool when you get a really good one. You can actually see like the bubble form through the skull as it's the whole thing's coming loose. But no such luck on this side, I think. Got a bit. Alright, so I got the structure out, but it's again full of holes. That's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Alright, moving up towards eyeballs. Okay, right off the bat, you can see those nice big dark eyes through his skull. I think I mentioned I did save one of the eyes from the other guy. A couple reasons for that. It's nice to have out so I can, like, have it while I'm working on stuff and talk to people about it. Um, but I also, since I'm going to do these as, like, little life-mounted um, birds, I actually have to buy artificial eyes. And so I can measure the, the size of the sclerotic ring and things like that to figure out exactly what size glass eyeballs I want to buy. And the, the world of glass eyes is majestic. There's so many options. Because a lot of critters get a lot of different types of eyes. So. These guys are pretty easy. They're, they're like straightforward dark little eyes. But. Alright. So I'm pulling the skin away from his eyeball until I find his actual eyelids. And those I have to cut free because they're just, they're actually like somewhat bound to his eyes. There we go. Starting to get in there. Starting to see that. All right. <laughs> yes, I definitely, if if I could find Eyes R Us, I would buy them from there. Uh, no, there's just taxidermy supply stores. They sell them there. I had a great conversation with a puppeteer who would buy the eyes for his puppets from taxidermy suppliers. Um, because they're meant to be lifelike, you know, so they're super high quality um, and really detailed. And so all of his puppets had animal taxidermy eyes but yeah the the taxidermy world the the stuff you can buy is so cool there's so like really specific tools but then you get things like rainbows of eyes and all these colors um different materials sometimes there's a whole world of um airbrush materials so that you can do fish fish take a lot of airbrushing you there's you airbrush um other animals too here and there but it's really prevalent in fish because a dead fish does not have the same coloring as a live fish so and they don't have fur that you can just cover it up with okay that second eye came out really fast that was nice but yeah it's just a big old catalog and they're really expensive yeah all of it's online i mean obviously there's presumably stores too but 
Yeah, if you look up um, McKenzie Supply or Wasco, those are two really big ones. And they're they're pretty. Like, the bags of eyes are really pretty. And you buy them in sets, usually. You don't buy, like, 60 eyes. But... Haven't been there. But, you know, there's a lot of good options. Okay. So I've got both of his eyes loose now. So I can get these guys out of his little noggin. And then hopefully get this skull loosened so I don't have to keep dragging around this dead body. Which is a weird thing to say that's not metaphorical. Okay. Okay, so grab that optic nerve. Let's give it a little twist and gentle tug. Oh, it's a little tissue on one side, but there. Eyeball number one. And then let's get eyeball number two out. Boop, boop, boop. It is really nice to be working on a bird that didn't die by hitting a window. Because I don't have to deal with head trauma. And head trauma is a big old pain in the butt. Head trauma. It's bad. Alright. Eyeball number two. And those came out real, real nice. Cool. Okay, so now I have to cut the head off so that I have it still attached to the body. Um, and this I'm not used to doing with an attachment down here, but it shouldn't be that much different. So just on the inside of his jaw, back behind here. Because I can't pick this up, I'm not going to hold it right to the mic for you guys to hear the crunching, but I bet you'll still hear it, so let's see. Skulls. They're crunchy. There's a Salvador Dali cookbook, and apparently part of that is him talking about how much he loves crunching through bird skulls, because he liked eating like whole sparrows. Oh, good. Glad you guys can hear the crunching. That's what I want to hear. Um, but yeah, Salvador Dali did weird art and also weird lifestyle stuff. And apparently there's a cookbook and apparently it's somewhat grim from an American food standpoint. But, you know. Okay. That's most of what I wanted to come out has come out. I left a little bit of his palette uh, in place a little farther forward than I wanted to, so I have to trim that out. Alright. Here we go. Okay, so I got the skin free. And that's gross. Okay, so, um, Machetto, this is a button quail. It's a Chinese white crested quail. They're also called queen, king quails. Uh, it had been a pet uh, and died of unknown causes, but the owner gave it to me. And I have two of these guys. So not that you can tell right now, although I did, do think it's worth pointing out kind of what we're looking at in total, so now that I've got it totally skinned. So starting from the top, that's its tongue. So I got that pointy, pointy little birdie tongue. A big old blob of brains in the back of his head. So you can see the back of the skull bit there. I'm holding onto his neck. And then this is his spine, and you can actually see the, um, the shoulder blades. And then down to the hips. So it kind of flares out here with the, uh, the knobs of the hips. And then big old thigh. So that's a and so you can see the benefit of doing the, the bottom cut is I can keep the whole 
Let me hold it like this so you guys can actually see past my huge hands. You know, I've got the whole body in pl intact now, whereas last week the one I did was a top cut method, which cuts the body up more, which I think it makes it go pretty quick, but um, you don't get the nice uh, intact body that you can then use for modeling later. So, pros and cons. But that is an entirely skinned body. Now I have to go back and do the detail work. So I'm going to put the body over there. And for anybody who's tuning in late, them's eyeballs. Okay, so I've got that. So now I've got his head. Uh, or most of his skull is still here, but it's inside out and gross. So I just got to clean this out. There are some brains left. Bird brains I have mentioned, and I will always mention, are just disappointing. It's just pink snot. Everybody's hoping, like, you're going to see brains and it's going to look like a tiny little um, zombie brain. It does not. It looks like pink snot. At least in birds. Um, it's always, like, doing this in front of, uh, like, kids, if I get a school group. Oh my god, can we see the brain? I'm like, it's not worth it, guys. Not worth the wait. Hearts are cool. Hearts look like hearts. But brains do not look like brains. At least what we from Hollywood what we think a brain looks like and again I'm not talking about human brains I think human brains actually do look like human brains which is I suppose obvious and I suppose bird brains look like bird brains you just have to not assume it's going to look like a human brain it looks like pink snot and it feels like pink snot um, and when they die of head trauma it's really pink Okay, so that's probably as clean as I'm going to get this right now. I'm going to trim it a little more, though. I left I left kind of more skull on here than I really needed, so I can just crunch this off the ends. Okay. Man, yeah, there's a little bit of schmoo. I want to keep the corners of his jaw intact. I like having the structure that that offers me. And it's just hard to like work around it sometimes. And right now I'm just getting extra. I don't want to leave anything behind that's going to rot or smell. Um, but you do want to leave enough behind that it is uh, workable. It gives me a little bit of structure. So I got to get that. You can kind of see that pointy bit of uh, bone here inside of his head. So I need to like trim that off. Get that out of the way. I ordered my clay to be able to um, basically rebuild the head that I'm currently destroying. It has not arrived yet, but hopefully I'll get that by next week. So, because you want to, that's getting critter clay or some, taxidermy clay is a little bit tricky. You want a clay that does not shrink when it dries. Um, and so that, and something that's not acidic or things like that. So there's a pretty limited range of clays that set pretty quickly, are not acidic, and do not shrink significantly when they dry. All right, I think that's the best I'm going to get in terms of cleaning out his head. Well, I say that and then I see a bit. Uh, I lost it. There it is. There's a bit of extra palette here I can get rid of. Okay. All right. Okay, so now I've got his little inside out head and his horrifying inside out neck. So I gotta fix that. So I'll pop him right back out the correct way. So again, I don't wanna push too hard because he has a pointy face and I don't wanna just make a new hole and push right through. So I gotta just lead it and you guys, you can sort of see his little beak sticking there. So I, now that I know where that is, I can just pull. And there's his head. Suddenly it's a bird again. Very, very cute little bird. So I was reading about the aviculture of king quail. And uh, there's people don't eat them. People, uh, but they're also not super friendly. So you, they're basically just kind of fun to breed and get wacky colors. They can, you can get them, like this one's a pretty classic uh, patterning. And 
This one didn't really have the obvious white chin, so I'm guessing this actually is probably female as much as I've been using uh, pointless male pronouns. But it's got the really nice, like, rich brown with striping. And in the wild, that's a pretty good um, camouflage. But they come in white and uh, pearl and cinnamon and stuff. Um, yeah, this went a little faster, but I'm not done yet. So I've got the head out, which is the last step that I did last week. I have yet to do the detail cleaning of the, um, the wings and the legs. So it did go faster in part because I, I know some of you guys were on last week, so I wasn't re-explaining as much stuff, but I love having those eyeballs there. I gotta move those off to the side, but, um, I think this bird was just a little bit nicer to me too. Some of them, you know, inexplicably, some are just easier to work on, some aren't. Um, this one's in pretty good shape. So I'm going to do his legs, or her legs. Let's start using female pronouns. I'm going to do her legs and then her wings. So, boop. Get that hind leg out. So we are cleaning off the drumstick. Literally, that's, you know... Drumsticks are calf muscle. It's always weird when I'm scraping down here. You actually do have to scrape this part. You can't just pull it. Um, some of the leg feathers, a lot of times, are the the skin is thin enough down here that they'll just like come through and remain stuck to the muscle, and it looks very weird. All right, so there is. Um, Again, knee and ankle. Okay. And then... Elphir, are you just, like, posting other people's media on my channel? Because you haven't said anything except posting links, and that may, in fact, be rude. Yeah, not cool, man. Okay, so cutting through some tendons. Get that loose. All right, so I just cut through the tendons and just push the muscle meat off of this because I do want to keep um, the bone, but I want that muscle out. The bone will give me nice structure when I'm actually doing the mounting and making it look like a bird again, but the muscle is just going to rot and be grody. Nobody wants that. Okay. Big old tendon sticking off the top there. So I don't want to cut through the end of the bone because, again, bird bones are hollow <laughs> and pokey if you cut through them. You basically create your own hypodermic needle and no one needs that in their day. So that's a nice, clean um, leg bone. So I can push that back through and do the other one. So Shard and Mom, you see how I've got more stuff. Hey, Elphir, thanks for saying. Because, yeah, if you're going to be posting links, man, just like... Tell us why. Tell us your thoughts. Okay. I guess it could be I fear too. I guess I'm not sure what the uh, the first letter is, and I apologize. Okay. So second leg. Got my adorable drumstick. So I just have to pull my, grab my tendons and get that meat off. It's crazy the stuff that will dry on in terms of living tissue, especially if you start adding things like borax or salts. Um, so there's just like muscle. If it's, if it's a big old wet muscle, you got to get it out of there, generally speaking. But cartilage, tendons, bones, you can usually play with them a little bit. Different skins. Some will treat you better than others. Eyeballs are gross. Eyeballs always have to come out. Brains always have to come out. Brains are mostly fat anyway, so they're not only would they go bad, they smell extra bad. Fat smells real stinky when it rots. No one needs that in their day. Okay. 
Okay. Alright, that one actually came a little cleaner. It's like one little bit to, to get. Alright, that's two legs now. Been cleaned off. Alright. Ah, I just lost a really big new feather. That's too bad. Oh, here's a cool one. So I mentioned that some of the birds have um, kind of bald areas for uh, various weight management reasons. So you can see that there's just a big naked part of the bird right here. So the back, the center of the backbone is like right along here, and there's always a feather track right down the middle of the back. And this is down um, kind of under the wing. And so it, there'd be chafing to an extent. You don't want to have a ton of feathers down there while they're under their wing. And they just don't need the coverage because the wing is offering uh, the protection. So there's so many feathers down there anyway, there's no reason to grow anything there. So there's just a big old bald spot. And so a lot of birds have these just... Uh, they're always symmetrical, you know, so you, you know that if there's one on this side, then there's one on this side. And yeah, it's just kind of neat. Bald areas on birds. And when you see a living bird uh, who's grooming and they like move something so you can see a bald spot, it looks really funny. And they clearly don't want you looking at your bald, at their bald spots, so, you know, be polite. Okay, onto the wings. And then this guy is prepped. Yeah, it is weird to have the head done already. Bottom cut. Different method. Sort of strange. Okay. Oh, that's weird. My computer made a noise. Oh, okay, that's something else. I don't have to worry about that. I uh, was abandoned by my OBS software, and it bugged out on me last week, so I was like, oh no, is it doing a thing? But it's not doing a thing. Or rather, it's doing the thing I want it to do. Okay, man. Yeah, the wings are a little strange. I don't know if you heard me just snap a bunch of tendons. But wings are complicated. They've got a lot of tendons, uh, a lot of really distinct groups of muscles that are, like, different from each other. So instead of just sliding past each other, it'll actually be a gap. Um, you know, but if you've evolved flight, then sure, fine. There might be weird engineering hacks you have to do to get to that point. Um, all right. So for those who were on last week, you'll remember breaking the wing feathers loose. We are on to that exciting step. So to get the wing feathers loose, the flight feathers, so I'll turn his wing right side out. The, the flight feathers on a bird are these big impressive feathers and they are actually embedded in bone. So that's how the bird can get lift is the, the feathers are actually embedded in the bone of the hand and the forearm so that they don't just flop loosely when the bird is uh, flying. And so that means I have to break those feathers loose from the forearm. I'm not going to bother with the feathers in the hand, so you can see the, uh, the wrist up there. I'm going to leave all that intact. This bird is small enough I don't have to um, skin that out. But I do want to skin down here because there's a big beefy uh, you know, forearm that I want to get out of there. So... I just gotta start popping. So I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone because that was fun last time. All right, crunched those guys loose. And now we have a really delightful little arm. So you guys can see shoulder, elbow, wrist. <laughs> uh, yeah, so involving the forensic adventure, maybe it's not as obvious. There's um, just a little bit of some discoloration 
in this one's abdomen. Uh, I haven't cut open the bodies because I want to keep them whole to do the modeling off of. So if they're all like, you know, uh, necropsied open, then I can't do that as easily. But like, there's just this local, actually that's coming through on the camera really well. It's just this darker area here, which seems a little weird to me. So maybe, maybe they got into a fight or they, they both leapt so hard they smashed into the roof of their cage and died. I, I still don't know what killed these birds. And of course, if it's like a pathogen, I'm not going to know. Um, if it's cancer, I would see that. You know, I'd see the big, well, okay, if, if it's a, a big bulbous cancer, I would see it. If it's lymphoma, I probably wouldn't see that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, there, there's something disquieting about not being sure how something died. I don't know. There's something, like, it's it's comforting to have that certainty. So, <laughs> could not tell you. Okay, so I've got my little wing weeding. And so I am completely not keeping this uh, upper arm at all. And for the lower arm, I, was, I had really good luck last week of keeping both of the bones in the forearm. So just like you, there's a radius and an ulna. And the... Ulna is this big, beefy, curved um, bone that had all the feathers attached to it. And the radius is on this side, and it's a much smaller, finer bone on birds. So, I will see if I can preserve both of those. And if you're doing a big bird, if you're doing like a hawk or even a duck, you do have to um, skin the hand. But what I usually do is I actually I, I skin up to the wrist just like I, I did on this guy. And then I'll cut um, an additional incision up through the hand. So it's like a separate, you know, little incision here. And that's how I'll get all the meat out of their hands. Um, but for a, a guy this little, it'll just dry. Just be a little bit of extra jerky in the bird. Who doesn't love bird jerky? Yeah, so right off the bat, you can see those very nice two separate bones. So I can just kind of scrape all that extra meat up here. Okay. Yeah, so that looks nice. So that just keeps my two bones, and that'll give me wing shape, which just saves me a bunch of trouble when I'm actually um, remounting him later and making it look birdish again. And these will just dry out. So you can actually kind of see a little bit. Eh, maybe it's easier because I've got the, the light shining through from this side. But there is, of course, bone marrow and stuff in here, and it does have blood, and it, you know, but it'll still dry out. It's just small enough that I don't have to worry about that stuff. Let me put that wing back. So actually, can I get in here? I'll reset this wing. I'll have to unset it later, but that's okay. So I'm putting his elbow back where the elbow was, and that makes the wing wing-shaped. You know, so it's actually holding a structure. It almost looks like it still has stuff in it. Whereas if I move that stuff, like, it, yeah, it just kind of naturally resettles into the right shape. So... It'll just save me some work. All right, one more wing to go. And then I'm wrapped up on this guy, more or less. And Mega, yeah, to answer your question, I, this one still doesn't have anything like um, skin damage. So all of my uh, speculation about slamming himself against the wall I, actually is inherently untrue just because there'd be big bruises. You know, so you'd see bruises on the skin that should match whatever bruises are underneath. So that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I don't know. Mysterious bird death. Poor little babies. Okay. And then um, I was mentioning that I am still in the process of getting all of my supplies since I no longer um, have a lab. 
hashtag 2020. So I am trying to do this in a home setup. Uh, so I'll get my critter clay soon. I just got my cotton. I'm so happy with my cotton. It's so nice. It's from a little farm in Kansas. I found it on Etsy. It's so cool. So I didn't have to buy like a gigantic roll of raw cotton batting. Um, I could get this like little bag from Kansas. All right, time to break some wing feathers off. For whatever reason, I always have to do this left-handed. Like, I'm right-handed, but apparently breaking feather connections is a left-handed maneuver. Okay. Righty-roo. All right. There's that little wing. So we've got shoulder, which I left a bunch of chest meat on this end. Just cut it weird. Um, elbow and wrist. So I just have to cut some tendons and I can get this guy out. This is very slippery and I keep missing this one tendon. and it keeps slipping out of my grab. Oh wellsies. I have skinned one bat. Uh so, of course, in the world of mammals, that's going to be one of the more complicated ones you can do because you half treat it like a bird and you half treat it like a mammal. So when you're skinning its face, obviously it's it's a mammal face. You, you know, you treat it like a mammal and its whole body you can treat it mammalish. But then it has crazy hand wing things. Um, and so with that, I treat it much more like a bird where I actually leave bones in place in the wing because it'll just dry. So it, doing a bat is very similar to a bird where you're basically just getting the big um, forearms cleared out and the shoulders, but you're actually leaving all those individual fingers in place so they can hold all the tissue. Because they're so thin, you're not, there's not really muscle there. Everything's tendons and it'll just dry out. All right, so that's a nice little wing. Very much like a bow. As in a bow that you shoot arrows with, not a decorative bow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's a chance I could get a bat. Basically, I'd have to just find one. Bat, most uh, bats in Illinois aren't particularly protected, so I can't go out and kill them. But if I find one, I just have to check the species. So if I found, like, a big brown bat, um, I'm pretty sure I could taxidermy that. I'd have to double check, though. The problem, of course, famously with bats is disease. And that's the other thing that's going to be tough with doing mammals is I am a mammal. And so I have to have much more thorough um, disease control measures in place. This is a bird. You know what it has on it? Salmonella and E. coli, just like raw chicken. So like basically this workspace is just like if I was cutting up raw chicken. So it's all over my hands. I just have to wash my hands and my life goes on. Um, but with doing a bat or a you know squirrel or any of those they're mammals there's a lot more diseases i can get from them and with rabies there have been cases of people getting rabies by handling dead things because they bats have really sharp little teeth and if you boink your finger on a tooth it's effectively bitten you and you have the saliva introduced in your system and then you die because it's rabies and it's horrifying so yeah i um if I did a bat, I would have to have a, a way better setup. Um, but they're really cool. Like, it's worth it, I think. I just have to... Th I have to be more thinky. 
I gotta think about it. And I will not be working on Chicago Rabbits at all. Uh, Chicago Rabbits carry um, Tularemia, which is a pretty nasty bacterial infection uh, that yeah, if you fuss the fur of a dead rabbit that has Tularemia, it will the bacteria can enter the air. You know, so you're you're skinning it and it you breathe it in. And it can cause lung lesions, coma, and death. Um, not worth it. Bunnies are cute. I'm not, I don't need that. I don't need that in my day. Um, so I will probably not be working on a Chicago rabbit. Uh, but yeah, Tularemia, also called rabbit fever. Not great. And sadly, it is present in this area. Okay, I'm just picking off some um, meat niblets that are left in here. Wow, yeah, you can really see the molt. See all those? It looks like black specks. Those are actually embedded in the skin. And so that that's the blood supply for the new feathers that this bird was trying to grow. Before it's un, unfortunate demise. Okie dokie. So that is now a completely skinned bird. So that was much faster this time. So I think that's a, a point in favor of the bottom cut. Clara, if you're still on, I know you always liked that. Um, so I acknowledge the, the benefits of that. Let me turn his little face, her little face. So yeah, really cute little bird. She's in really good condition. Um, and so now I have to get the supplies to turn her from being a very, very flat little bird skin back into something that looks like a bird. Um, yeah, cause right now she's, she's quite flat, although lovely in her flatitude. Um, for anybody who was wondering, I no, I'm not going to skin the feet. The feet still contain all the feet stuff, but they're just going to dry out and be great, so I don't have to worry about that. Also, man, those are some weird toes. Bird feet are weird. Like, if there's any question that this is uh, actually an extant dinosaur, just look at the bird's feet. That's a dinosaur. <laughs> just ridiculous. So, okay. So, basically, my next steps... Um... Then I'm gonna. Whoop, I threw a lid on the ground. It's fine. Uh, next steps for this that I won't be able to do until I get more supplies uh, that have already been ordered. They're just winging their way through the magical delivery systems of the world through do ma magical delivery people. Um, I already have my cotton. I need one more type of wire. The two wires that I have right now are really heavy. They're just a little too robust to do a, a delicate little bird like this. So I need some lighter wire. Um, and I need my critter clay. And then I need to actually remember to buy eyes. I, I I started looking at it and I got sidetracked and then I didn't purchase eyes. If I somehow forget or really want to get to that point, I can fake it. Uh, this is a small enough bird that I could just get like ball headed pins like you use for sewing and just trim them. And then you have the little black, you know, pin head. That would be the cute little black eyes on this bird. She's about the right size. I could probably get away with that. Um, and I'd rather have the real stuff, but improvise um i already have needle and thread that part's easy and basically i'm going to build a a model of the bird so you know here's her real body here's her so i basically use this as a model so i can then you know put her back into a lifelike pose yeah no this was way faster than last week i think i'm also getting used to being on twitch um but you know the, this is is my example of how I would build the body. So I have to make this like big nugget shaped body that's real flat. Like I don't know if you guys noticed, that's like real real flat. Um, birds look spherical because they have wings. So you you know the wings are obviously missing from this. So you can imagine that would give you um, a little bit of width. And then they're just fluffy. And so a lot of the final stages of the taxidermy is making sure that they are fluffy. The intestines on this look really weird. Yeah, I might have to just cut these guys open and figure out what's going on. But I'm going to do that after I'm done modeling. Um. <laughs> yeah, wet cats are way, way smaller than you think a cat should be. They look silly. Wet owls are worse. A wet owl looks silly because man owls are fluffy. Like, an owl's head is this little teeny thing on a weird skinny little neck. They, they're so goofy looking. 
Um, but when they get wet or if you're doing other stuff and they lose all those feathers, they just look like little alien dudes. They're very cute. Um, there's, I saw a great diagram online around Thanksgiving, which was a turkey, like a live turkey outline. And then you could see the skeleton inside of it. Cause the turkey's this like spherical, huge thing with a big tail and the whole whatever. Um, but they're, it's mostly fluff. <laughs> it's just this little tiny body with this really skinny neck on the inside. Birds are weird. Um, all right. So yeah, that was way, way faster. Cause it's only after eight. So that was an hour and 15. Whereas last week was, uh, I think over, um, the two hours. But yeah, I think I'm just getting used to working here. And I didn't have any tech problems this time. That helps. My camera actually stayed in focus. Look, you can actually see the bird. So <laughs> I, I'm kind of okay with that. Um, I'm going to be working on other taxidermy things too in the future, which are larger. I have a pigeon. The pigeon is like, what, six times bigger than this little guy? So some of those are going to go a lot quicker. I didn't bother weighing the specimens beforehand. Um, so I won't have like a direct comparison to be able to talk about, but that is kind of fun. So since I have more time this time, I can show you guys how I wrap up the bird skin so that it doesn't dry out and become really awful in my fridge or in my freezer. Cause you've been seeing me adding little bits of moisture to the skin to make sure it doesn't dry out. But if you put things in the refrigerator, they dry out. Um, if you put a slice of cake in there, it gets funky. You know how that goes. So you want to make sure that this is going to remain damp. And so I have my, you know, handy dandy paper towel. Let's go with half of this. And so I can just fold this into a shape that's going to more or less, you know, be the size of my bird and get it all wet. I don't need it drippy wet, but I need it meh, pretty wet. So now that is all wet and I can just put that and my bird. So that's touching the open part of the abdomen. And then I fold in the pieces that I want to make sure that they stay uh, wet. So my legs in here and the head, especially heads drying out is tragic because of course everybody looks at faces because we're humans and we like faces. And then just fold the whole thing like a bird burrito or a bird taco. It's a delightful little bird taco. And then that is what will remain in my freezer. And these will stay good for months this way. So you can see the head's totally gone. You don't see any exposed tissue. Um, all those delicate parts are <clears throat> covered. And so this way it's not gonna suffer from freezer burn uh, the same way. So I can keep the body and just like last time, I'll keep one eyeball. Let's see if they're different. Yeah, this one's right here. Eyeballs tend to get really sticky. Eyeballs are just gross. Like everything about the eyeballs is just like, that's nasty. That's creepy. I will keep it. All right. I'll put you back in your little baggie from once you came. So I put the body inside um, a little bit of paper towel just so it doesn't get my nice skin dirty. Because again, I do have that open intestine and I don't need that to be horrifying. Okay. All right, so that little friend can go in the fridge. Uh, like a million years ago, we were talking about the difference between skinning mammals versus birds. And another really big difference is mammals tend to burn hotter. We have really high um, body temperatures. And uh, you'll get slipping where the you, basically the body starts to uh, digest itself. The, the bacteria in your gut... Ooh. Sorry, I'm throwing my sharp spin around. Ah. The bacteria in the gut of the various mammals will start to eat the dead mammal once the body stops protecting itself from its own bacteria. And so that's why, like, if you think about dead things, they get bloated. The bloating is the bacteria releasing gases that digests you. And so the mammals, once they heat up, the having the tissue become too warm actually causes it to fall apart and um, decay faster. And so if you have a bad mammal specimen, it's it ends up with naked bellies. Where all the rest of the fur looks really good, but all the fur falls off of its belly because that's the part that had already started to decompose. 
which is a bummer. So something I didn't show last week is how to take a scalpel off. I don't think I did. Um, because of course I don't want to just necessarily grab this because I could severely injure myself. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, but you necess- it's a good idea if you don't have to, not to. And right now my scalpel is fairly dry, but if you'd been working on stuff and your hands are slimy and it's slimy, you're more likely to slip. So you can take your hemostat and just grab the bottom of the scalpel and lift it over that central channel, and then it just slides right off. And then this guy goes into my super professional sharps bin. See, again, sharps. It's labeled. All right. And then the rest of this stuff, I wash in the sink. It's just bits. It's fine. You know, it's meat. I actually, I have a composting service, and so this napkin full of weird tissue chunks just goes in the compost. So parts of this little bird will become, you know, farming compost. Which is kind of nice. It's a very industrial circle of life, but eh, do what you can, I suppose. All right, so that cleans up the majority of my workspace. Um, well, okay, then my I'm basically wrapped up. Uh, I'm not going to. Actually, you know what I will do. Let's take a five minute break. I have the worst uh, opossum skull. Uh, it's totally clean, so I can actually take the gross warning off. Um, but it is uh, shattered. <laughs> so let me go wash my hands and clean up my workspace and take a quick five minute break. And then I will come back and we can play with that. So, oh, what is a composting service? To answer this question real quick, because I think it's cool. A composting service, you keep a bucket of your kitchen scraps. So if you don't have a yard where you can have your own compost heap, um, going on. You can put all your kitchen scraps and other organic material into a bucket and they periodically on a schedule come and pick up said bucket and take it to a composting facility where they actually heat compost it. So it's a little bit faster than just having a big pile. Um, I won't go into the, the nuts and bolts of exactly how that works, but they do then uh, take your various things and turn them into usable compost that can be used for farming. So We pay a service to have someone take my kitchen scraps away and turn it into something useful, which makes me feel good. So, um, I use healthy compost or healthy soil compost in Chicago. They're great. Shameless plug. Um, all right. So with that, I'm taking a break. I will be back in five minutes. It's, uh, 823 by my clock. So I'll see you guys in five. If I can do this through the cellophane. Haha, I can. (laughs) Because... I, yeah, I'm not touching my mouse right now, y'all. Let's be real.
Alrighty. Ooh, wow, that's, that's gonna work. <laughs> okay, I am back. I have cleaned my work surface, so this has been uh, tidied up and disinfected. And now I have my other fun, fun, fun project here. So, this is a bag of skull. Uh, thank you, Clara. Love it. That skull, I don't know how well you guys, oh, you can see him, belongs to this opossum. So, this opossum is roadkill that a friend of mine found and fed to her domestic beetles. So if anybody ever wondered how you get bones real, real clean, you let the bugs do it for you. Dermestids are a fantastic flesh-eating beetle that specifically want the nasty, old, dry stuff that no one else wants. So, like, if you think about, I don't know, some dead thing you might find in your yard, if it's fresh, it's bloated, it's wet, it's slimy, um, it's, it's exactly what you don't want to step on, and it's covered in flies. Flies love soft, fresh putrid flesh. That's what they're going for. So flesh flies want to lay their maggots all over something that is, you know, been dead like two days. Like real, real primo stuff. Um, Dermestids are what come later. Dermestids wait till the flies have grown up and flown away and lived their beautiful fly lives. And the wind has carried away the moisture and the tissue has dried out and become like stringy and leathery, um, nasty stuff. And they eat the dry stuff. So they want the mostly dried jerky that's left behind that no one else wanted. And so they they love getting down to just the bones. They've eaten every bit of tissue. Um, let me hold this up a little bit. Off of this beautiful skeleton. And uh, there's a few little like choice bits left on here. Uh, there's some fur. There's, you know, there's definitely some tendons. Because obviously there's... Some connective tissue, because you can still see that sort of together in one piece. Um, so that I'm going to play with at a different time. Because right now, my challenge is this. So let's get these pieces out. I might need to get some baggies. We'll see how this goes. So this has been not only cleaned by the domestics, but also degreased. So a lot of the remnant fat and internal, like... Um, moisture has been removed by my friend so it has that very nice dry bone sound oh man there's just powder in here I'll just leave that in the bag um wow <laughs> this is this is a joy uh, I need tweezers let's see those and a poking stick for sure because gracious me. Actually, let's update my stream info too now that I've changed this. Um, so we're going to make this reassembling opossum skull. I can spell any of these words. Man, it's really nice to be able to use my mouse again. Washing my hands, I tell you. And... Okay. So... Done. Okay, so for anybody who is joining now, uh, the quail is done. I have skinned that. We'll work on that more next week. And now I'm on to a big shattered pile of opossum. Uh, let's see. I think that's all of this. Do, 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 do. Okay. So yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. Well, like right off the bat, we got a really nice jaw. That that's some lovely jaw. A little bit of sinus on it. There we go. Um. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, the tip is missing, so you can see the shattered uh, end. But this is this is a great example of why not to get hit by cars, because this could be your skull. So look both ways when you cross the street. Oh man, there's a um, whisker in here. Neat. So a whisker managed to survive. Are these different messages? 
Oh man, okay. I don't know if you guys can hear those updates. Apparently, uh, out of chat, chat that I'm on with other people is active right now. I'll deal with that later. Uh, okay, so by far, this is my biggest piece. And then they get smaller really quickly. Whoo! Dang. Yep, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so there's all sorts of good stuff in here. So, like, you get pieces like this that are all um, honeycombed. That is sinus. So that's stuff that would be inside the skull. I wonder if I can get out of that conversation. Sorry, guys. I didn't think that sort of thing would make this kind of noise. Boop. Boop. Hope that does it. Okay. So... Okay, so I'm going to put my whisker there, and I've just got a whole bunch of sinus. So, okay, this is kind of like doing a puzzle. Um, so I'm going to make a sinus pile instead of a um, border pile. Wow, is this just a big tooth? Woohoo, look at that guy. I didn't know possums had teeth that big, but I usually don't break them out of the skull. So that's cool. Okay, so we need a tooth. Oh, there's two of them. Haha. <laughs> Check those guys out. Okay, so I need a tooth pile. I'll put that by my jaw fragment. What else do I have? I guess that. Ooh, ooh, is this. Oh, man. Ah, I just had a tooth fall out. Okay, let's see where that went. I had this in the freezer, so it's kind of funny and cold to hold on to. I think that's where that tooth went. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that tooth goes there. I am not totally convinced that these go together. Nope. Okay, well anyway. Jaw bit's over there. Whew, there's another jaw bit. Okay, let's move that so you guys can see my my growing awesome tooth pile. This is the occipital condyle, so that's the back of the head. Um, so that's nice. This is where your spinal column comes out. So the, the first vertebrae, the atlas would have attached there, which may be in the box. Now I'm not, okay, I'm gonna stick to the skull. I'm not gonna go looking for that. But anyway, this is the back of the head. So I'll put major other pieces over there. What is this black thing? That's probably just from the uh, domestic box. So mystery items I will put off to one side. What are you? Okay, this is the sagittal crest, so this is the ridge on the top of the head. You know when you're petting a dog, you can kind of feel there's that the ridge on the back, kind of kind of you know, backish topish of their heads. That attaches the big jaw muscles. So that's sagittal crest. Alright, there's another jaw piece with more sinus on it. Yeah, even the, the teeth are shattered, so the impact that killed this animal just blew it away, unfortunately. It probably didn't suffer, given how much damage there is. Oh, hey, okay, there's a little friend. So, you can see this. This is the uh, dried dead body of a dermestid larva. So, this is a flesh-eating beetle larva. They're the part that actually eat the tissue. As far as I know, the adults don't particularly eat... Um, much of the flesh, but the flesh-eating part is going to be the little larvas. And domestids, you'll find these occasionally in, like, bags of rice. So if you find a little caterpillar-looking dude with tons and tons and tons of, like, really spiky-looking um, hairs on it, it's probably uh, actually a beetle larva. So I'm going to put him off to one side. Uh, he is super dead. Uh, my friend practices good, good hygiene with her beetles, where when you're using them, you anything that you take out of the beetles then you then freeze so you're not spreading pests um that again will potentially get into your pasta no one needs that yeah, except maybe the beetles so that's more jaw that looks like the back of the head i'm not totally clear Ooh, ooh okay so this is clearly a jaw piece yeah that's cool 
Okay, so that's cool. Can I find another one of those? Jeez, this is a lot of little tiny pieces. This is... The fact that it's so straight kind of tells me that this is a piece of jaw. Kind of doesn't look like anything, but I think that's going to be jaw. This looks like the side of jaw. You can kind of see where the teeth had been... Let me get the angle there. You can kind of see how the raking light shows the the grooves where I'm pretty sure teeth would go. So I think that's jaw. Ooh, come back. Um, what are you? I do not immediately know what this is. Might be a part of the back of the head. There's this really cool structure. Um, trying to get my angle here. Like this center bit here. It's a... Uh, Maybe this is like the very, very back of the sinus because this is really textured and the rest of the bone isn't. And you can kind of see on this side. That's cool. I don't know what that is, but I'm saving it. Neat. Uh, da, 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 there's another mystery dark colored thing. Put that over there. Oh, there's another tooth cluster. Oh, it's the front of the teeth. Look at those little weird teeth. I love opossum teeth. Opossums have more teeth than any other North American mammal, and I love that. Um. Ooh, carpet beetles in your yarn. I'm so sorry. No, carpet beetles are different. Carpet like adult carpet beetles are the size of a really big sesame seed. Um like you know, they're but they're little dudes. Uh adult domestic trying to think of more food analogies. More like a um small sunflower seed but yeah they're much much bigger okie dokie what else we got okay i got another one of these long pieces i'm still guessing that's jaw but i guess i don't know Boop. what are you you're cool looking that's just a long thin piece oh you can really see like the texturing there so that that actually makes me think this is probably the top of the like the bridge of the nose so i'm gonna say top of the skull for you what are you? Oh, tooth, tooth go here. Is it you? Ha ha ha, so good. Okay, so I got those guys. That's very satisfying. Very satisfying. The rest of this, less satisfying. Lordy, this is a lot of tiny pieces. So um, when I took the specimen, I, I didn't really anticipate that I'm ever gonna have this look exactly like a perfect skull. This will probably be odd. Kind of my idea is I will see how much of this I can put together and I'm assuming there's going to be big, big gaps or possibly, depending on which side it was impacted, maybe there's going to be an obvious, you know, ruined side. Um, and that part I'll rebuild with other materials. Maybe something really simple. Maybe I'll just grab some, like, rainbow sculpey. You know, like, I, I haven't really t decided how much I want to do because I wanted to see what I could put together. So I'll basically super glue together the pieces that I can. And then once I have an idea of what actually... Um, is salvageable out of this pile of tiny fragments, then I'll figure out kind of where I want to go. But this will not be a representative um, opossum skull. Because I don't I don't think I'm that cool, you guys. <laughs> this is this is neat, but I don't, I don't think so. This is definitely the back of a jaw. I recognize that curve. So I'll actually put that with the rest of the bones. For the head, that's also... Oh, yeah, actually, here. So if I hold there so yeah you can tell that's the back of the other jaw so okay i've talked myself out of it i'll go back over here with teeth do, do, do. what are you not sure i think this is the back oh this little cup shaped thing i think this is the back of the jaw by back by the ear mm, maybe that's part of the other jaw that's uh, probably also part of the back of the other jaw. Is this just the crown of the head just completely imploded? I am not finding a lot of pieces that feel like the, the rostrum. Like, I wonder if this guy just ended up entirely like his snoot was under a tire. Which is grim, but... Alright, you're a nice flat piece. I'll put you over here. Um, nice flat piece. You can go over there. 
That's a jaw piece. For sure. Jaw piece. Head piece. I should preface all of these with, I think. Um, that's, oh, okay, good. This looks like a bridge of the nose. Okay, that's good. And th this, this is neat because, ooh. Uh, you can see the sutures of the skull, so that's the natural um, uh, division between the plates of your head. So, you know, your head bone is not one big bone. You, you have a bunch of plates in your head with little squiggly lines between them, and that's what this is. So that's the fixed joint from the top of his head. That's cool. Goodness gracious me, these are bad. No, come back. Not sure. That looks like a kind of interior bone. Put that over there. Some of these almost look like toes. I'll put you over there. That's a nice one. That's current. That's just top of the head. That's probably teeth. I'm surprised I'm not seeing more teeth in. Oh, I say that and then I just see a big tooth. Um, okay, this is cool. So the roots of adult teeth are real big. So these two bits are the, the root. That's actually the part that's sticking into the jaw. The only part that would have been visible above is that bit. So nice tooth there. Okay, yeah, I just had to complain that I wasn't seeing teeth and then suddenly they're just jumping out at me. Um, hashtag, not literally. So like, that's a tooth and that's a tooth. And that's a tooth, and that's a tooth. Do, 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 do. Okay, buddy, that's a tooth. And can you see that? Yeah, you guys can see him as I'm pulling out. Those are all teeth. Uh, I th that might be a broken tooth. Not totally sure on that guy. That held teeth. Like, yeah, you can see how that would just perfectly line up, so that's really cool. So, teeth. Is there any more toothers? Oh, yep. Tooth. Yeah, there's some bits in here, like I think that's a broken tooth, but the, those are going to be harder to figure out because they're so little. Um, wow, I don't know what you are, but I love you. That's a cool piece. That's some top of the head. Deep. That's a broken tooth. Man. That's a tooth. Did I mention they have lots of teeth? That's a jaw portion. Wow, this is a pain. That might be related to jaw, but I'll put that over there anyway. Top of the head. So I'm not going to bother re rebuilding all this sinus. Um, that is madness. That is the path of madness. I don't need that. Um, it's too bad. Sinus bones are cool. But I don't currently own a microscope. <laughs> so I'm not. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, there's some really good fragments here that are worth saving where I, I can tell it's big enough that I'll potentially be able to glue that onto something. So like. Some of these guys, I can still move over here. Like that. Yeah, sinus, sinus. Yeah, I'll put that over there, but I don't believe in it. Let's see. I'll save that one. Okay, this is starting to just look like sinus. That's a something, probably a top of the head. That's a something. That's a something. Blah, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. Oop. That's probably a fragment of a tooth. That's something, that's something, that's something. This is madness. And I'm not going to throw away all this stuff that I've declared 
to be garbage because if I'm wrong, I'll be real sad. So I'll keep this and then I can go back if I'm missing that one piece, you know, and then I can see if it's actually in there. Because a bunch of these are definitely doable. A bunch of them, yeah, I don't know about it. <laughs> They're pretty dicey. Wow, yeah. This is the sort of thing I better not sneeze to. I'll just go everywhere. That's potentially something. That's a tooth. Skull fragment. Ah. Uh -huh. Skull fragment, skull fragment, skull fragment. I have to be really careful too not to like squeeze too hard when I'm doing this. You can you can tell I'm picking them up, but I'm trying to be um, barely picking them up and they drop kind of early because I can just like utterly crush it with my giant human strength. So I have to be really careful. That's a something when I'm doing this. In a way, it's easier when you have a microscope and you're going through fragments like this because you have context. It just, it's a little bit simpler to be like, oh, I can, my brain understands how small that is. Like somehow my brain gets to a certain point with this kind of mess and it's like, nope, I give up, too small. It's now reached the point of just being teensy. Oh, that's a tooth. Boop. Oh wow, that's a really cool sinus piece. Or maybe like an inner bone. And kind of see how like filled with holes and generally detailed that is. Like I before I started working with fossils, I kind of just thought that skulls were more or less like a bubble of bone. You know, it's just like, here you go, just put your brain in it. Have some holes for eyes. Um and unsurprisingly, it's way more complicated than that. That's a wood shaving. Boop. Sinuses. Oh, tooth. Okay, well this is separating out nicely. You know, just, even like when you're doing a puzzle, as soon as you start having like your pile of veg pieces and your pile of the red ones or whatever is relevant to that particular puzzle, it starts to immediately be a little less stressful. This guy's doing that. That's a cool piece. That's a cool piece. That's probably garbage, but I'll save it. Ditto to you. That's a cool piece. Sinus, sinus, sinus. That's cool. I don't believe in you, but I'm keeping you. That's cool. Doop. Okay, so that's... I think... This stuff is predominantly now um, sinus, so I'm going to put this back. Somehow very carefully. I need a sheet of paper. Most of it. Yeah, it's just powder. <laughs> oh, he's so shattered. So the cool thing about working with these little pieces is you can tell what a good job the domestic beetles did. You know, the fact that these fragments were even preserved to begin with um, kind of demonstrates what a good job those little beetles uh, do and how they're way more delicate than we are. I will not be getting dermestids at my house. I have an apartment. You really need a shed. I have heard tell of back in the dark ages, museums having the domestic box on the floor of the museums so people could see, and that gives the collections manager uh, heart palpitations. So <laughs> don't do that. Okay. Oh, I should put my whisker in there. I have a whisker. I love that. Okay. So anyway, whisker in the bag with the sinuses. Actually close the bag because if I drop this or sneeze or laugh, whatever, I'd be really sad. Okay, so now we have 
kind of two two groups. I've got um, jaw and tooth related over here, and I have skull related over here. Um, whew. Ooh, there's some good crunchy bits left on here. So this is tendon. I don't know how much you guys can see the color difference, but there's definitely some old tissue. That's something um, the domestids, they gnaw on um, cartilage and stuff, but they don't, they're not really good at cleaning it up. So there's some, we'll twist that off. There's one of those little friends. Jeez, there's just so much damage. Like, even the fact that the, you know, that that's, the sections of the teeth are shattered. Usually you don't see teeth just broken off. Teeth are really hard. Um, that's why they're real good for, like, chewing with. So, that's a bummer. Well, I think I'm going to start, move those head bits prominently out of the way. Let's play with teeth and jaws. Uh, they're easy. They're satisfying. It looks good really fast. And there's nothing wrong with going for the easy win. Easy. So, okay, so our best, our best guy is this one. Okay. I noticed this piece. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, magnificent. Okay, so this just basically goes back together. Um, so you guys can see... Whoop. Hey, man. Don't do that. So that just... That's the termination of this whole thing. So I'm missing this little notch right here, but largely that's actually staying in place. Um, so that means I have almost all of one lower jaw. I... No, that's not just it. It'd be really cool if I could just, like, see the piece that goes right there. Um, so I'm looking because I would be foolish not to try. But I really don't think I'm just gonna find it. Nothing's immediate obvious, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend time on that at the moment. It's kinda catching on something though. Hmm. Yeah, so that that's gonna go together and just be a jaw. It looks like I'm missing one uh, little tooth there. So I will look for that later. But yeah, so I have the entirety of one half of the lower jaw, so Humans have this too, where there's actually a split here um, that has a little bit of um, connective tissue, usually, uh, but it offers some flex. So when we're chewing, it, you know, there's a there's a little tiny bit of flex right here, and so that's where this snapped off. Is there part of what's missing here is where it would attach to the other jaw? So that's pretty straightforward. So now I need to make the mirror image of this guy. Okay. Um, Big canines go elsewhere. Okay, so I have the front of the other jaw, so that mirrors that, which means, do these just go together? That would be super cool. I'm gonna go with they don't just go together. I think I am still missing a fragment. Oh, there's some little weird piece here that's being weird. I'm just going to let that drop. I am losing teeth left and right, but I can put those back. All right. Well, that is going to go together. I am maybe just should start gluing some of these that I know go together. I'm going to add some glue. Blue in the freezer. And do 
I still have a piece of cardboard like right over here. Hooray! Good job, me. Thinking ahead. Uh, I like having a little bit of like cardboard or card stock that I can mix things on and then I just chuck it when I'm done. Uh, so I need. So I can put my uh, super glue on this and have a better idea of where it is at any given time. Hmm, it's soaking in a little fast. Well, and the answer to that is tin foil. Will not soak into the tin foil. There we go. That looks real good. That I can work with. Okay. So what was I doing? I was going to put this tooth back in because it's so perfect. There's no reason not to. Yeah. So that tooth just goes there. Um, this is a really common thing, actually, if you're ever cleaning bones. Uh, is to have all the teeth fall out because obviously your teeth are connected by your root and that's the part that your dentist you know pops out if you have to take out a rotten tooth and so you just they are separate and so if you actually clean it really really thoroughly you get rid of all that tissue and it comes loose so I can just take this and whoop didn't mean to dip the entire thing in the super glue but butterfingers Okay. Okay, so that is now glued in place. I'll give that a second to set. And then over here, I was just dropping teeth all over the place. Not what I want to be doing. So that big guy goes there. And then. I also have acetone on order, because right now the only acetone in my house is the type you take your nail polish off with, which works. It has the chemical I need, but it also smells like flowers and is a little silly. It's got moisturizers added to it, stuff like that. Stuff I just don't need for this type of project. Wow, this guy had some pretty funky teeth. Wow, can you guys see the, here, let me pull it out, the crazy root on this? It's all twisted. That's a weird little tooth. Oh yeah, that totally goes there. Okay, so we got those guys. And then do you go here? I'm not convinced of that one. Perhaps it's this one. Well, it's more believable, I think. Oh, I'm gonna glue it in place and move on with my life, so. Because again, this guy, we're not going for flawless because he is flawed. <laughs> like, flaws have occurred and they have nothing to do with me. Woo. Mm. I really need to have a dedicated set of uh, tweezers to work with super glue because it really is a bummer if you get the super glue in the ridges of your tweezers and then have to clean it out later unless you're just always gonna have it and then who cares? 
Can I do the world's tiniest chopsticks? Wish me luck. The answer is kind of. That, that actually sort of worked. How can I get this actually to settle in the way I had it? Yeah, okay. That's looking like some teeth. And then this guy, dab some on. And I don't need a lot. Like this isn't gonna have to put up with a lot of abuse. I mean, hopefully. Um, I just needed to have like any on it at all. Okay, so that's a nice little front jaw fragment. We'll set that side. How are you doing? Other front jaw fragment. Ooh, you are really broken. Ooh, okay. This one's gonna be tougher because it's eh. <laughs> Shedding teeth. Um, oh yeah, all of these are coming out. Jeez, this guy is in rough shape. Not that I didn't know that going in, but it's just surprising. They have so many teeth. Like, this is unnecessary large numbers of teeth. What's your hobby? Oh, I grow teeth. I'm not convinced of that at all. I, I feel like I should have the bottom of this tooth somewhere. I don't know if I've seen it though. It might still be in whatever portion of the jaw I'm missing. So this part I don't think I want to necessarily glue anything in place yet. It would be nice to get these front teeth back in. This is really broken on the inside. Not convinced that's the right teeth. How about this one? It's not convinced it's the right teeth. Well, that one looks better. Man, that other piece was so satisfying. Like. These guys were really in there in a pool spray, and these are being real goofy. Although actually comparison, from comparing them, I feel a little bit better about it. And I also feel a little better about trying to jam this over here again. Okay, yeah, actually. That's looking a little better. It's still goofy, but it's marginally more sensical. Let's see. It looks like my... Okay, my super glue dried up. I need more. <laughs> no, you didn't miss the whole thing. You missed all the skinning um, because it went unusually quick this time. But I am now working on this utterly shattered... Um, Opossum skull. So. Like, this guy is, this is in bad shape. This is, I mean, and that's how it was presented to me. I knew what I was going in for. Um, sometimes it's still surprising when you get there. So uh, to catch up, not here and anybody else who's just uh, popping in, this is a opossum that was hit by a car and didn't look too bad when the finder picked it up. And then after the tissue was off, it was pretty evident how shattered, oh no, how shattered it was. Okay, I just had a tooth go sh shooting towards my torso. Did it get conveniently caught in the folds of my shirt? 
Ah, oh, no, that would have been great. I didn't hear it kaplink. Okay. Very carefully. Oh, found it. I found it. Have no fear. And it didn't have super glue on it yet, so I don't have super glue all over everything. Um, which is the way I want to be. But anyway, hit by a car, super shattered, it's very sad, trying to put it back together uh, to some extent. Where did this piece go? What is it here? Oh no, it was here, that's right. May have momentarily glued that to my finger. Cool. Oh, it keeps twisting when I put it back to this spot. Not totally clear why. I think this is supposed to be more supported by that big tooth and it's not playing nice. Oh there, I think I just more or less got it seated. Okay. Yeah, this guy had some funny teeth. I'm not going to glue the big one into place yet, just because I want to get the rest of that broken end in. But yeah, it's looking a little more believable. I still have an unnecessarily large number of teeth. That's okay. Do you? Um, I think I could put these guys in with a certain amount of dirty feels. So, uh, I don't know how much people notice, but I managed to just pick up a canine and put it directly into the right canine spot. So, of course, there's a 50% chance I would get it right the whole time, but I'm still going to check in case I do actually have them swapped and all that. So, I think that one goes here. Does this? Yeah. No, I think I got them right the first time. All right, cool. I thought so, but it's a few check. So, put that back. Uh, like that. Okay. So, I'll let those canines set. That's all right. Those are some nice molars. This is honestly a pretty cool thing. I mean, bones are just neat, so it's kind of still cool to get to see all the different pieces, even if they're um, weirdly out of context. Yeah, so this one's missing a big tooth there. Let's see if I have it. Is it this? And this is where, if I really want to do a good job, um, I could pull up images of every single possible tooth and kind of go through there. But can we all agree that that's just a whole bunch of little white lines? And honestly, I don't think I'm going to get them super precise. And that's okay. Sometimes the hard part is trying to figure out which part is up. Like, this one has a pretty distinct little crown where it's shiny and there's a little bit of grooving. Others, like, I don't know. That was definitely too small. I don't think I saw anything that's this big. Oh, okay. I'm going to set that aside. Move on. Oh, it's so shattered. No, oh, nothing missing there. That's the back. Clunk. These are cool. All right. And then do you... So I've got this one sizable tooth. I don't think so. No. Nope. Okay, and then obviously I've got, like, this guy, which will fit a whole bunch of these. I'm just not going to do that right off the bat. Oh, hey, I have one canine. Um, I feel like I saw where this one 
kind of gone. Hmm. Ooh, that's a broken end. I'll come back to that. Hmm. Okay, I don't see where this guy goes. So this is a full, like, premolar. And I don't immediately see where that one goes together. So I'll get to that in a bit. things. Well, here, let's try. Okay, so with my largely intact jaw, you can see, you know, you got the whole part that holds the teeth and then the part that actually attaches or, you know, is your, your hinge. And so I do have um, the, the back of the other side so I can start kind of building up to see if I can create this big sail. Which I think I see. A wider part for this. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. <laughs> this is hard. Oops. Wait, did that definitely go on here? Yes. Yes, no? No, maybe? Yes? Yes. So that I can just put back. Man, this keeps evaporating on me. So for anybody who's ever worked with thin super glue, which is, I think, a lot of us, um, it feels like water, and like when you put two things together, like nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, and then like, oh, it's stuck, cool. And then you can move on with your day, but at first it's, you know, it feels like a bunch of wasted effort. So, okay. So, that's a little crooked, but I think it's gonna be okay. Me. Put that to the side. What about these long pieces? What are these guys? Because these could be nasal or jaw. Because, you know, I've got these long jaw fragments that don't have anything. <laughs> Yeah, no, super glue travels. It's it's insidious, mean stuff. And yet, it does the thing you want it to do. Maybe. Oop, I had another tooth fall out. Yeah, I mean, unsurprisingly, this first part is just, you know, <laughs> quite specifically damage control. Okay, so that tooth fragment goes there. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have super glue on my hands when I'm done with this. There's not even a question. It's just, it's a question of quantity. You know, how much am I gonna actually get stuck on my hands? And hopefully, not a huge gigantic ton. Okay, so that's back in there. Yeah, like these pieces feel like they should be pretty identifiable. I wonder if they're the ones I put in head bones. Nuggets! It's a different tooth. Yeah, I need more super glue. One moment. Assuming big root, little root. Yes, big root, little root. All right, 
That's back together. Anybody else want to fall out while I'm here? No? Jerks. All right, moving on. Um, I was trying to figure out if what would go under here. This is driving me a little crazy because it could be really obvious, you know, because I've got some of these kind of cool pieces, but one is straight and one is curved, so that helps me less than I wanted. It might be in the pieces that I had over in, like, what I thought might be top of the skull. Because some of these have more of a curve to their breaks. Maybe? Maybe? No, it doesn't quite work. Man, this is going to take me a minute to do... I bet this is the jawbone, but I don't know if this is the jawbone I want right now. Which makes it less useful. It's not the jawbone I want, it's the jawbone I deserve. What does that mean in this context? Let's see. Yeah, I'm not convinced by any of these. Not convinced. Okay, nope. Hmm. Mm. Oh wow, it's 920. Time flies when you're putting together impossible puzzles. Let's see. That'd be cool if these just went together. Oh, they do. <laughs> these just go together. <laughs> Neat, I'm gluing these together and I'm gonna feel real good about it. That's the nose. Okay, so that's the, or more like here. I mean, we don't have rostrums, but yeah, this is the top of his nose. All right, well, I'm putting these together because there's literally no reason not to. Flap, flap, flap. You have to make that noise for it to stick. That is not a true fact. But it does work. All right. All right, well, that's satisfying. That looks like a piece of something. So that's cool. So this is, underneath this would have been where a lot of those cool sinus pieces would have been. All the really thin um, feathery bones would have been in there. Man, I don't even... I have seen pieces that may have been eye orbits. That would be really cool. If I can actually get an eye orbit out of this guy. Because this... Oh yeah, that goes right there. Yeah, so that that's starting to give me the length of the skull, which is cool. I'm not going to glue this together yet. I want to find some of these other missing pieces before I would commit. Oh, that just went together so pretty, though. Ooh. Oh, that's really good. Can I... Ooh, where's that? Ooh. Okay, that's an exciting piece. I need to see if I can find this other piece. Forget teeth. We're over teeth. Teeth are, teeth are yesterday's news. This is... Because what I want to find is that. That piece. Because that's top of the head, too. Oh, man. So I've um, not done this a ton with modern bones. When I'm usually doing puzzles like this, it's with fossils, um, which is just as fun. And solidly in the realm of things that people usually tell me they would never want to do. So that's cool, but I really like it. It's really fun. Hmm. Yep. That's a little different. What's the underside of this look like? Hmm. 
No, not convinced. That's a really sick junction. Nope, probably not. Okay, well, that was a big possum. So if I get those together, so the back of the head would have been farther this way. Okay. Does this just go on here? Oh, that just goes on there. Oh, yay, okay. Okay, now that I should probably just glue into place. Clunk. Clunk crunch. Um, Okay, so we have the actual, oop, that I'm gluing on right now, or dripping glue into. I think I shore that up. Um, okay, so we have the definite back of the head. Definitely fits to this definite piece. Definitely. So that goes there. That's the back of the skull. Sagittal crest. Moving forward. And then this boy fits on here. And so that's heading towards the tip of the nose. Um, opossums have hilariously tiny brains like super tiny brains so you can see with the the sagittal crest how it kind of um goes in right here this is the brain case this is where eyes would be here's heading out towards the nose so like it's this little teeny little thing and they are hilariously small brained man i might be able to put more of this together than i had actually thought i was going to succeed at the back of the head um, is really complicated because you have ears and lots of important tubes. Um, so it's there's a lot going on there. Yeah, I might have zygomatic arch pieces, which would be rad. I don't know what you are. I'm putting you to the side. And I don't know what you are. This is a cool piece. Like, you look at this piece and you're like, that is something. That was probably important at some point. Maybe it goes here. It goes there. That's the bottom of the skull. Alright, that's starting to be bigger, but I need more pieces to... So something I've found with my um, prehistoric skulls too is the, the areas around the ears is obviously really complicated and full of holes and tunnels and exciting stuff and often seems to be eh, the part that's apart which is super annoying oh these are exciting pieces okay so i'm gonna get uh, something out of this it's gonna look skull-ish which i'm pretty excited by this is a jaw piece hold on i need to put this over here i think i was playing with this before that's why it looked familiar i still think it's a jaw piece Someone needs to tell this that it's a jaw piece and it needs to behave better. Um, the lower jaws are really fun to put together because they're like the separate mandible thingy. Your upper jaws are fixed and they're part of the rest of your skull. And so they look stupid until they look great. Which is a great way to describe anything. Okay, that is a jaw piece. That goes right there. So this guy that I've been messing with is part of the lower jaw like that's a woo like perfect little piece super satisfying that i might just glue i'm gonna glue that let's do it commit to that piece that's real nice i wonder if i can find that wedge shape piece maybe Seems findable. No, that's flat. Eh. 
Maybe I don't have that piece. So it's really like a equilateral triangle. Which of course if it's shattered into six pieces instead of just being the one, I <laughs> really don't have a lot of hope to find that. Nah, I'm gonna walk away from that. But I really like overall the fact that that actually exists as a piece. So if we again compare it over here. So I got those two uh, hook ends and you can see how that's heading on forward. And so the bones also have a grain to them. And so you can tell usually right away if the piece that you're doing is definitely wrong if it uh, doesn't match the grain, which helps immensely. Yeah, it doesn't just go on here. No. These are fun. Oh man, it's 9.30. Uh, I'm probably going to go a little bit longer, but I don't want to get sleepy because that's when you start making mistakes. Um, more mistakes. That's when you make more mistakes. So I don't want to get weird. I really want this to fit. And it really doesn't. It really should though. Hmm. Cause so this is the back of the jaw and this is where the big like sail goes up. I'm sure there's a better term for that. Mer. Oh, I glued that earlier and it came undone. Because it's literally eggshell thin, or egg, no, it's thinner than an eggshell. That might be my cue that I should actually stop. Because I did have this glued. It goes here. All right, let's get this guy back on. But then I might have to just call it if I'm going to be undoing my own good work. Oh, <sighs> oh well. Oh, that's okay. So, all right. So this possum skull, I think, is going to take quite a while. And I'd always kind of planned... Oh, good, that went right back on there. Um, for this to be my project when I needed to extend. So the fact that that quail got finished out really early this evening, this is perfect. I'm going to be working on this opossum for mm, the entirety of my life at this point, I think. Uh, because, wow, these pieces are little. But that's okay. So again, for anybody just tuning in, this is a the shattered, 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 shattered skull of an opossum that was found as roadkill and cleaned by dermestid beetles and degreased by a friend of mine. And wow, it's in bad shape. <laughs> it doesn't look like an opossum at all. But I've got one good jaw to work with. And that's that's enough to start. So all right, excellent people. I'm going to wrap up for the evening. So uh, if you're just tuning in and you find this interesting, please follow me. I sure appreciate the follows. I do something related to taxidermy every Saturday. Uh, so again, I skinned a quail earlier today and now I'm working on this beast. And so next week I'm planning on mounting the quails. So their skins are done. Um, I just have to build the little bodies that the skins will then fit over so that I can finish preserving them. I also need to wash the skins, but I'm going to do that off camera because there's no really good way to set that up and it's not that interesting. So, 
Uh, that is my plan going out. I will be on tomorrow morning doing my usual cooking uh, feed. I will be making tacos with all sorts of weird uh, filler, including uh, cactus, because I mentioned to a friend I was doing it and they gave me a cactus pad. So tacos that involve cactus, they just keep getting more ingredients. All right. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll stay on for just a minute. Uh, but otherwise, thanks guys. Thanks for hanging out, uh, as I do my weird <laughs> projects and I will see everybody later. All right. Then I'm going to put up my away message and then I will log. So if anybody has any questions, you'll stop a second, but good night. See you guys later.